As a Fuji cult member initiate, I now wear leather pants to sleep, and I subsist entirely on expired cereals from 1976. Cause they're vintage. If you're also in the Fuji cult, you may be debating between the behemoth over here and the little engine that could. Is it good enough? I have experience now, and I can let you know. Should you just cheap out on this piece of shit? 7300? Or go for the mama bama? Mama Jamma Bummer. I'll let you know. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So we got a lot to talk about today. I got a bunch of footage on two separate days. Completely unfair comparisons, but I have some experience, a lot of experience with the 70 to 300, and now I've been using this one for a couple days. <laughs> two days? That's a lot of experience. We got a lot of footage to go over, but first, if you're debating between these two lenses, just know that you already know exactly what the difference is. This one is larger, heavier, more expensive, more reach, sharper, better quality. Like you know the compromises you're gonna make. It does have slightly worse stabe, but barely noticeable. I'll tell you one thing, side rant, Fuji stabe, it's so good when you're just standing there and then you try to follow a bird and you get herky jerks. That's probably user error. You gotta learn to move with the system. That was my buzzer. I got my package. Oh, that is exciting. So we have a lot to discuss here. First, I just wanted to show you a little side-by-side -side 4K 60p versus HD 240 frames per second. The HD obviously looks like absolute trash in comparison, but there's the moments that you need that. You have to have that slow look or you're not gonna get the magic. If you have something like this, it's just like a robin sitting in a tree or a duck just slowly wading through the water, then you go for the ultimate quality 4K. But if not, the magic could be yours. Take this clip, for example. I just, there's something about it. It's so nostalgic looking, even though it's not like a magic, it's just a sparrow on a twig. But I don't know if it's the colors of the Fuji Matrix or the slow motion, that's 240 frames per second. It's now over the bullshit content. He's leaping away from me and I can't follow him. I suck at my job. But we had a moment there. We had a moment, just something about that clip. I was like, wow, that looks so surreal. Fuji brings that to you where no other system will. They choose not to bring it. Now, first things first, the focal length, you're wondering, is that 100 mil extra worth it for the size and the girth? and the weight in your back pain. Let me tell you, it's not so simple because Fuji in 4K60 has an 18% crop and in 240 frames per second, 29% crop. So your new crop factor for 4K60P instead of 1.5 APS-C, it's 1.77, almost micro for a loser in its abilities. So if you're talking your 70 to 300 lens, your max in 4K 60p is 531, whereas the 100 to 400 is 708. That's more than 100 now, isn't it? Crop factor is increased. In 240 frames per second, your 70 to 300 max is 580 versus 774 of the 100 to 400. I mathed you. Take it. So there are moments, like in this hawk footage with the 100 to 400, you want to be closer, you want to see the details. What are you doing? Are you eating something? Is that a squirrel? You dare eat one of my squirrels? That's rude. I got this super slow motion, just something squirted right here. He's pulling it apart and it's, oh God, what was that? A gallbladder or his actual bladder? That was weird. Something you can't get without the 240 frames. It's like, that was worth it. That was totally worth. So the 100 to 400 got me closer. The 70 to 300, it'd be almost the same shot. Not quite, not the magic. So there's moments where you're gonna wanna be tight like that. Was it worth the wait? Yeah, it was, it totally was. On the other hand, if you were to witness a California Wren for the first time, on the 70 to 300, you get some environmental portraits going on here. Yeah, the, the bird's tinier in the shot, but it's still interesting to me. I find like when I'm waiting for 
something, like a bird to do something special in slow-mo. If I'm too tight on it, it does that special thing leaving my shot. It's not no longer in my frame. It's not in my movie anymore. It's in someone else's movie. So it's actually nice to limit yourself. Sure, I could zoom back out and like show discipline, but I don't have it in me. So when you have a little shorter lens, you actually get a more pleasing image. So don't think that, oh, I need that extra bit to get right in on a squirrel's eyeball. Do you need it? No. Here's a little side test. On the 70 to 300, I wanted to see what a black pro mist filter would do. It kind of just ruins your life. Like the peaking is harder to see. Everything is just worse. Although I bet you if there's some backlit magic and a little glow factor, that's what I'm going for anyway. Slow motion, mystical, surreal, magical nature. Not just like, oh, I got a sharp bird. I hope that sharp bird pecks your eyes out. And here's another example, 4K 60p versus 240 frames. You probably don't need the 240 frames in this just stationary eating of whatever that is, a cracker. God, grow up, squirrel. Do better for yourself. When it comes to stabilization, what I've noticed is the 70 to 300's a bit better. It's a bit more solid. But like as you're moving around, the IBIS jerks them both around anyway. So it, it can be tough to smoothly follow something and never put boost on. My God, I had it on and it was just jumping around the... F it was so awkward. Never again. But like, I don't think you're going to notice much of a difference, especially if taking photos. If you were to do that for some reason, you shouldn't. Just a little side rant on Fuji photos. What the hell? Here's just a squirrel I took. It was like 800 ISO. It's the grainiest thing I've ever seen in my life. What the, is that supposed to be there? Little wormy artifacts? Photos you suck. That's not my fault. Sure, I took 15 shots of a woodpecker. Not one of them was in focus because I was that 450th of a shutter. <laughs> I suck at my job. For those who don't know, I don't think I even mentioned this, but I bought the X-T4. My friend was selling his. We found another one. He bought his black one, sold me his silver one. So 1550 Canadian for this body and an extra Fuji battery. And then I saw this lens 70 to 300 used for 950. And then we saw the 100 to 400 for 1600. So I ended up spending $4,100 on old used gear. And I already had better stuff with the G Master. I suck at life. But thank you so much, Flatter Santa, Marcus Picks, everybody who's ever given me gear. I had so much fun testing it all, and then, yeah, some of it, okay, we part ways. And I've gathered a bunch of coins, and now I'm willing to, like, spend some money and test things out. And if I have to sell off things that suck, like, I imagine one day I'll sell one of these lenses. Why would you have both? But I had to. I had to test them both and see which one feels right to me. I'm still leaning the 70 to 300 just because it's so easy. I put this on, you can clip it, but man, that tripod mount, it comes off, but there's no screw to put a lens thing on. So you have to have this on and it sticks out a bit awkwardly. So it's on the clip. You can walk around like that. It's just, you will develop scoliosis. That's fine. I was just gonna get the 100 to 400. The only reason I got that 70 to 300 was because of how rare it is right now. I felt like I had to buy it because I saw one. Like even if you buy it new, there's like back orders, multiple people ahead of you fronting, cutting in line. I don't know, so I figure I could sell it off easily, but I think keep that one, wait for the 150 to 600 and see what that's all about. What is that, is it too heavy? Because once that's existing, I don't think this is irrelevant. I mean, it is irrelevant. Your mom's relevant in my life. I saw a white-breasted nut hatcher, something like that. I got this Birds of Canada book. And so I saw this thing. They move freaky along the branches. They go upside down. I was like, that's new. This is the 100 to 400. I'm like, hmm, what is that thing? What do you have there? And he grabbed a thing. And he was cracking it. He's cracking it. Oh, that is so cute. 
the, I was looking through my book and I was like, oh, that's him. They go upside down and then he did it. Look, ah, uh, uh, he's upside down. They crawl like downward. No other bird does it, but the nut hatcher. I nut hatched your mom. Yeah, I did it. But the 70 to 300, if you get a little closer, you still have the magic. I mean, I've noticed it. The closer you can get, almost no matter what lens you have, like that's what matters most. I saw a woodpecker a while ago on my Olympus and it was so close to me. I got really like a nice close up shot and I was like, wow, that looks better than anything I've shot. So get closer, unless it's a bear, then stay further away. Don't try to steal a bear's salmon, take a selfie with it. Haha. <laughs> he has claws. You just have soft skin. I don't like those odds. They don't mix. Like this of the duck. See, he's starting to do something. I was like, all right, 240 frames per second. We're getting it. We're getting, keep his head in the frame no matter what you do. Oh, oh, you suck at this. Uh, I didn't know what to do. Keep the tail or the head in the shot. I got neither, I think. That's where you zoom out a little. You don't have to always go in. I notice that when I'm in wildlife, no matter what lens I have, I'm pretty much always zoom to the max. All right, we got it. Just discipline yourself. But here's a duck on the 100 to 400, the better lens. It's not as good because I wasn't as close. So like the other shot looks better. This was, I think I was in classic neg. Just don't do it. It's fun. It's a fun color to play around with, but I do prefer the F-Log. Here's an interesting comparison. I think they were both a Sparrow, different days, different lighting. So it's not that interesting. And that was a really short suicide drop, but it's a good test to see the same basic distance from the animal on these different lenses. I mean, if you're posting the content to YouTube, they both look very similar and you save so much weight and money with the 70 to 300. It's hard not to recommend that thing. And here's where the bird decided that he would rather jump off a cliff than be in my video. He decided that and it was rude. That's, that's just, he plunged to his death. <laughs> Birds are so funny. Just sometimes they leap, but they don't move their wings and it just looks like they're jumping to their death. And it's just funnier. It, the slower you can get it, 240 frames for, for the bird death jumps. Those are, those are fun times. So what's the better lens? It's like, you already know, like, yes, the 100 to 400, slightly sharper. Colors are the same, I think. Autofocus, I haven't noticed. Like, I'm just doing back button focus. Little side rant, that wasn't working for the longest time. I was like, okay, manual focus, but back button hack. And I was like, yeah, sure. And it wasn't working. My only conclusion is I was pressing a different button. Because I was like, why isn't this? Because it works now. And that's great. Fantastic, boom, press, boom. <laughs> you can't track a damn thing, but it works to acquisize your bird instead of going 15. Because I noticed with the Fuji, it's a longer throw and that's actually nice when you're in the ballpark. You almost have the bird and then you're making these adjustments that actually matter. Whereas the Sony, it's so sensitive that like one little turn and you're to the bush like three meters behind it it's like how the hell it's very but it's easier to track something long it's like you get from 10 feet to 30 feet in an instant but i think i prefer the fuji way of life more fine-tuned like a fuji based wine look at the size of these gun sacks oh my god fuji is actually a little bit taller almost the same exact weight like maybe 20 grams lighter so, wow they both hurt so i think for most people just get the 70 to 300 if you can even find it through my affiliate links i doubt they'll be the check for sure they might you might get lucky but like if you want the ultimate quality okay go for it you're driving to the place i don't mind hiking with this thing but it's a noticeable difference if you're just going out like with your girlfriend for a walk and you don't want to be this freak with a big thing like just you know 70 to 300 on your shoulder you can still hold hands whereas this is like okay sorry hon you're on your own i got this to deal with she slips on the ice it's like oh you'll be fine just ice it just lay there you're already on ice you'll be better and I'll, I'll come back i'm just gonna go get some shots you'll be fine just ice it I'll be alone forever. 
I'll tell you though, I don't know what it is. Sometimes maybe the lighting changes a different day, a different mood, but like I got this raccoon footage with the Sony. It looked so much better than the Fuji. I guess I, I was closer and I had more reach. Even though it was with the teleconverter, I was like, damn, that Sony, that's beautiful. 4K 120p, it's like, damn. It's just the stabe on this thing is so noticeably bad. So I'm in no particular rush to sell any of this off. I like it. I kind of, I could probably do without the Sony, but I don't know. Sometimes you want that 4K 120p, you can't beat it. You just can't beat it. But for the 240 frames, if you can ignore the moiré and the Fuji footage, which shows up on every bird, it's unfortunate, but I think it's good enough. You get more reach for slightly less weight, better colors. Decent autofocus system hack. Boom. Manual focus is better once you're there. I like Fuj. Well, you can't go wrong. So now that I have all this stuff, uh, still my mind, what else could I get? There's really nothing. I was thinking 1.4 times teleconverter for this. See if that's better than the two times. It could be. Could be better stave. There's jerky shit with the two times. It sucks. That's about it though. Fuji, there's nothing. We wait for the X-H2 and the 150-600. to Could be fun. I still want to try the GH6 with either the 100-400 to and a good copy of that lens somehow. Or the Leica with the 2 times teleconverter. Doesn't even work. Olympus is officially dead to me. Just their sync stave. It doesn't work good for photos maybe. But they're good for being the lightest. This setup right here. The lightest you can get. It's good. In good light, fantastic. I will still use it probably. But like to upgrade into something better, like they don't have anything. It sucks. So which lens will you buy today through my affiliate links? I put a lot of them down there. There's Amazon. There's used on Amazon. There's B&H and used on B&H. Cheaper options for us hobos. Well, look at you. You have buyer's remorse already. I can smell it. That's good times. All right, I'm gonna leave after you buy a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt and the stuff. Don't forget the stuff in your cart. You have to hit checkout. You can check the subscribe button too. It's against your religion. I get it.